پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ڈفرنٹ ڈائمینشنس کنڈیشنلٹیز ڈفرنٹ کانڈیوٹس ڈفرنٹ پرسپیکٹیوز اینڈ ڈفرنٹ ایشوز ریلیٹڈ ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اسپیشلی ان دا کانٹیکسٹ آف پاکستان اینڈ آلسو ہاؤ تھنگز آر چینجنگ اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ وی وی ہیو ٹاک اباؤٹ اسٹریٹجی وی ہیو ٹاک اباؤٹ کمپٹیشن اینڈ ٹوڈے وی گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ انادر ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک اینڈ دیٹ از ایشوز آف گورننس ریلیٹڈ ٹو دا ریمونریشن پروسیس Now, when we talk about remuneration, then we are not only talking about pay, but we are also talking about pay, benefits, and emoluments, and other conditions which tend to augment and reinforce one's complete package for the work or performance that he or she is doing within an organization. Now, remuneration is a form of uh, explicit motivation. When we talk about motivation, there are two types of motivation, and one is implicit and the other is explicit. Uh, explicit is something which is more tangible, which is more visible, and remuneration uh, is just one of them. The various uh, conditionalities of remuneration tend to further reinforce uh, the motivation. Then it could be offices, it could be working conditions, and all of those things, they form explicit motivation. Implicit or internal motivation is basically driven uh, by passion, is driven by commitment, is driven by loyalty, is driven by caring, is driven by various other modes and nodes through which a person uh, feels um, ownership for the organization and tends to perform beyond expectation. And that again uh, can be related to how the organization is treating that particular employee. However, today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at the remuneration process in more detail. Uh, the governance of remuneration incentive systems has often failed because negotiations and decisions are not carried out at arm's length. In many cases, it is striking how the link between performance and remuneration is very weak or difficult to establish. Now, what we see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that many organizations uh, tend to uh, do their remuneration strategies or their remuneration frameworks or their remuneration classification in isolation. Secondly, uh, they tend to benchmark the market and many times they do not benchmark the market. Sometimes they are unable to foresee the future and then they are not able to distinguish between a poor performer, an average performer, and a high performer, and an outstanding performer, which again tends to undermine the whole remuneration framework and the remuneration context which has been developed by the organization. And another very important thing is, is that they do not develop a direct link between performance and remuneration and they try to make one size fits all and that basically means that if there is a particular percentage which is uh, being applied then it is being applied across the organization which actually is uh, both uh, misleading and also can be demotivating for the employees concerned because then a, a exceptional performer uh, would basically be measured with a below average performer. And this type of incongruency or incongruent framework uh, tends to have negative repercussions on the productivity performance of the organization and also on its employees. And again, tends to askew the whole governance process because there is no just governance taking place based upon merit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the remuneration schemes are often overly complicated or obscure in ways that camouflage conditions and consequences. Transparency needs to be improved beyond disclosure. Remuneration policies should be submitted to the annual meeting. So again, these are the other conditionalities and factors which are involved in the remuneration. That one, it should be merit-based. Two, it should be transparent. Three, it should be fair. Four, it should also cater to the needs of the employees. Five, it should be incentivized and also ensured that people have uh, this vision that they, they can move forward in their careers and can improve their working conditions. Rather than keeping them cam camouflaged and keeping them vague and keeping them in such a way that people tend to be confused. So therefore, uh, disclosure is extremely important. And then the remuneration policy should be placed before the annual meeting, the board of directors, and especially the uh, human resource committee uh, should be playing a major role in all of this. And the company should realize that it should uh, work in tandem with its employees and not in isolation 
with its employees and that again is a very important aspect of corporate governance because when we're talking about corporate governance do remember ladies and gentlemen that we are not only talking about financials we are not talking about uh, financial integrity we are actually talking about stakeholder integrity we are talking about uh, stakeholder compliance we are talking about stakeholder uh, inclusion we are talking about diversity and inclusivity we are talking about the fact that everyone uh, should uh, feel the ownership of one particular organization or of that particular business group so these are extremely important uh, perspectives and aspects of the remuneration process the goal needs to be uh, that remuneration incentive systems should encourage long term performance uh, defining the structure of the remuneration incentive schemes is a key aspect of corporate governance and companies need flexibility to adjust systems to their own circumstances so again every sector would have a different remuneration policy a different remuneration framework and a different Uh, approach towards remuneration but there has to be similarity within the sector there can be improvements it can be out of the box and again uh, the whole uh, working environment can be made more fulfilling uh, for everyone in a better way through a proper coherent merit oriented remuneration uh, policy and framework which should be applied across the organization we we again see that there are some uh indulations in all of this in which uh many a times the top management is benefiting the most while uh, the shop floor or uh the grassroots level employees uh, are not gaining uh, appropriate benefits which again is very skewed and is also immoral and it's very important from the corporate governance point of view that uh, there should be a rational and logic behind uh, whatever incentives are being given and secondly uh, that it should uh, be visible and it should be fair that is extremely important it should not be that the top management is benefiting uh, in hundreds of percent uh, percentile while the lower uh, staff are hardly uh, even meeting the inflationary factor and right now in pakistan this is all the more so because at this stage we have a 32% uh, we have a 32% uh, plus inflationary rate and therefore uh, all the organizations in the context of corporate governance must be moving towards a rationalized uh, remuneration uh, process for the employees for the coming year or otherwise uh, multiple problems uh, would be emerging uh, through all of this and therefore just like i was mentioning steps must be taken to ensure that remuneration is established through an explicit governance process where the roles and responsibilities of those involved are clearly defined so uh, that basically uh, tends to um, summarize what i was basically saying and uh, we cannot compromise on this extremely important process and this extremely important tool uh, which tends to catalyze the organization forward in performance and productivity thank you so much